Okay, guys, this is part two. Um, it is still September 13th, um, Friday 13, 2024. It's 7.53 p.m. right now. Um, and I'm I'm doing part two um, <clears throat> of the first part I just did. And man, I'm just looking over everything that I've gotten the last couple of days. And there's so many, so many good dreams that everyone in my family, like we've gotten. Um, I hope that they really like encourage you, lift you up and just keep you like going, just keep you on the path with Jesus and just keep you going, um, lift you up and, and let you know, like he's almost here. And if you don't know Jesus, I hope that it pulls you to just come because he loves you. Just come to Jesus. Okay. So I'm going to get started because they always run a lot and I don't really want to do a part three. Um, so I ended off and, um, what I ended off on, um, it says yesterday at 3 58 AM. So yesterday would have been, um, September 12th. Okay. Hold on. Let me think. Yeah, I guess September 12th at 3 58 AM. So it was still September 11th night, but early morning like the 12th. Okay. So September 11th and early morning, the 12th at 3 58 AM. And I was given Romans eight and nine. So how I read that first or got that was Roman eight, nine. So I'm going to read that and then work with me because after this, I always do everything in order because that's the way God gave it to me. Okay. Um, and his words should be priority over anything else. So I hope that you listen to it. Um, I have dreams and everything else to give out that he gave or revelation. Okay. Revelations. Okay. Um, so September or Romans, uh, eight, nine is, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay. So when you come to Jesus and you come to him, he indwells in you and then he teaches you to follow him, right? You start showing fruits. Um, it's a change. It's a lifetime change, but sometimes he knocks uh, things off really quick to uh, heal you and help you and um, to unburden you, things like that on things. Okay. Um, let's see. So we're going to read. Okay. Romans eight, there is therefore no condemnation to them, which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I've got dog hair all over me. Oh my goodness. My little dog. I'm sorry. Um, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So when you come to Jesus, there's no condemnation in you anymore from he convicts. So you change ways like he, he like does a little spanking and punishing or, or he, um, tells you like, don't be doing that or let's do this or, you know, and you get that little conviction that would make your heart sorry or something and then turn away. You turn away from that that he's convicting you on, but he, you should always know that Jesus loves you, that you're loved, right? If, if something's telling you that, that God doesn't love you and Jesus don't love you, then that's not the spirit of Christ. That's condemnation from the devil. Okay. Rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Okay. So when you come to Christ, he loves you. You are now sons and daughters to God. Okay. Through Christ Jesus. Um, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God 
for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can't please them if it's just you in the flesh. You need God inside of you to please God. Okay. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness, righteousness of Christ. Remember the breastplate of righteousness. You put on salvation and the breastplate of righteousness. And then you're taught, you, you're taught to like gird up with truth, the truth in Jesus that he loves you and you just keep walking with him and that he's got you. Okay. And that he died on the cross for you and he rose again. He's coming back, right? That because you chose him, he chose you and he's going to, you're going to be in heaven with him one day. Okay. And then you walk and you learn first, you do the salvation, then the righteousness of God. Because once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you got the righteousness of God, then you gird up with that truth. Okay, so no one can lie to you. And then the sword of the spirit is the Holy Spirit that indwells in you and the shield of faith. That's the faith. How do we build faith? We read the Bible, right? This is like, this is our sword too. We read the Bible, the word of God. Okay. And it quenches all the darts that are coming that will attack. And then we walk and we put on the shoes of, um, uh, the gospel of peace. That means we spread it to others so that they can be, have freedom and love through Jesus Christ and salvation. Okay. Um, so we grow in that and we learn how to use these and learn to walk, walk life with him, right. To follow Christ. <clears throat> and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, ye are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live through the spirit. The spirit's got to kill it, cut it off. It's a circumcision of the heart. It's got to, the spirit comes in and circumcises your flesh from the, your soul and the spirit. Okay, because this is stupid flesh. Yes, we're supposed to deny things and learn to tell it no and learn to uh, um, like turn away from things we shouldn't be doing, right? Um, so that we don't die. <laughs> I mean, it's something could, you know, really hurt us and hurt, kill us. You know, the devil still wants to take out the body, right? But once you're his, he can't take out the soul because the soul belongs to God and it goes to heaven. Um, but the spirit comes in and circumcises, um, your spirit and your soul from the sinful flesh, because now you're the temple of God and the temple of God that lives in you cannot be part of sin and your flesh still has sin in it that you got to deny all the time. I want you to do things like lust of the flesh, right? Um, but the Holy Spirit comes and circumcises it away from the flesh. So the temple of God doesn't touch sin because now your righteousness of Christ is in you and he's changed you. Okay. Um, let's see. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So listen to the Holy Spirit. He's a teacher and he's a, he guides you and he, he won't fail you, right? For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That means daddy. So we call God our daddy. Okay. We, our spirit cries out, Abba, Father. Okay. Um, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and of children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may all be also glorified together. 
For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole, am I so? That we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. That's like that woman, Revelations woman, um, Revelations 12 woman, travaileth the whole creation. So the world is in like labor pains, ready to give birth. That means, you know, the rapture and, and Jesus coming. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. When we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. We're already adopted when we come to Jesus, but we're waiting for us to be taken like into his home. Um, the redemption of our body. So when the Holy Spirit comes in, it says that he's the, the Holy Spirit seals us to the day of redemption till, till Jesus takes us. Okay. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth. Why doth he yet hope for? Okay. But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. The spirit also helpeth our sins. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts, who's God, he that searches the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spread not his own, spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. The blood of Jesus, God justifieth us. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay, chapter nine. 
I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who was over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken non effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, by our father Isaac, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power, in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Seboeth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma, so Sodom, and been made like unto Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah. 
What shall we say then that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness? Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Hmm. Whosoever believeth on Jesus shall not be ashamed. Jesus is the stumbling stone laid at Sion and the rock of offense because people don't want to believe that Jesus could be the Messiah. They, they can get it as a stumbling block. And whoever believes on the name of Jesus, that he is the Son of God, the Messiah, shall not be ashamed, it says right there, right? Okay. Okay, then at 12.09 a.m., I um, recorded this to myself. Okay, so September 12th, 2024, I remember two dreams. Um, the first dream, I remembered driving to church um, this evening around 6 p.m. And um, I remember it being the first dream that I had. I woke up from a dream, and it was just a part. I was standing where we hang our keys, like the living room and everything. And I was with my son and daughter and my daughter handed me uh, one of our black key fobs for our car. And um, I was like, it doesn't work. This, this doesn't work. It's not working. And I didn't know if it was like a battery, like something was going on, it just didn't work. And that's all I remember. That's all I remember. So I don't know if that has something to do with like, the solar flares or an EMP or I, I have no clue um, on that, but that's, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you three options on that. Solar flares, EMP, or the vehicle is known as your ministry sometimes and a key fob. We have um, a couple of different key fobs. And so it could be like um, one that's not um, working out the works laid before them that God had laid before them at that time. They're not, um, cause when you come to Jesus, he's, he says, you know, that he's already prepared works um, for you to do for him from the foundations of the earth, um, for his glory. And you're supposed to walk in the works, not that it's salvation, but to walk in the works. Um, so one of those keys wasn't working and the car could be the ministry or something. Um, and that he just needs everyone on one mind, one accord, um, because it's the time it's a battle for souls, right? Okay. Then the next dream, um, I was like in college and I was in a classroom and there was a pretty good amount of people in there. Um, I don't know, 30, 20, 30 or something like that. And, um, um, I remember the teacher was not there. We had a substitute teacher and the substitute teacher was Daniel Adams. And, um, he was talking about things and then everybody was just kind of doing their, it was like toward the end of the class. Like we were all, um, kind of getting ready to go. We were kind of rushing to leave or run, rushing to go, like getting, you know, just talking like you do at the end of class and, um, getting things together and things like that. And I kept trying to talk to him and I was talking as he was kind of walking around right there by the desk and by the chalkboard or whatever he run, you know, it wasn't a chalkboard, but you know, um, but the front and I was talking to him and he was moving around getting things together. Okay. I don't remember what things, but he was getting them together because he was getting ready to be done too. Like we'll leave, like we were leaving. And, um, um, I was telling him about a couple of dreams that I've had in real life. In this dream, I was talking about dreams that I've had, okay, before. 
And some of the dreams had him in it. And I was trying to get understanding to some of them and um, of what I needed to do. And he was like, oh, that's interesting. And I can't remember anything really that he said or what he was telling me about him. But most of them or some of them were like just dealt with him and or things or um, I felt like they were like deliverance, like casting out and things like that as well. Um, and then all of a sudden. Okay, I'm going to warn you right now. Um do not go see, don't see that new movie deliverance out. It is demonic and if you have attachments, like don't do it. It is not godly. It is not godly and it's not goodly and it's not good for you. Don't watch that movie. Um, but I want to let you know that when I got called, like, and I was getting the fire of the Holy spirit, like risen up in me again to, to do this, like a little over two years ago or something. Um, um, a friend that I had sent me a video and showed Isaiah Saldivar to me. And so I used to listen to like that group, um, preach and things like that, um, as well. And so they also did deliverance, um, and things like that. Okay. And, um, and I watched, I did watch them for a good year. Um, and I know that the Holy Spirit, I know we're called to do that. So this isn't against anything. Um, I just backed off of watching it. Me and my kids like backed off of watching um, like any of it all the time or watching it at all. Um, because we always thought that when the Holy Spirit rises up and says, okay, it's time or whatever, then the Holy Spirit, uh, us stepping out in faith, um, if it's needed when we're praying with someone, then we will know and it'll be risen up in us and we will... Um, you know, the Holy Spirit will take care of that and we'll, we'll do what he's pushing us to walk in and things like that. Um, so we haven't really watched or I haven't really watched anything. So when I talk about like, I've seen Daniel Adams or something, I'm not, I don't watch him. I don't watch them really in anymore. I don't. Um, so it's weird that they keep or he pops up in my dreams or something like that. Um, but I wanted to express that. Do not go see that new movie. It is not good. Have I seen it? No, but I've heard the actors. I heard a little clip of the actors talking about it and things and who they had like to come and like pray or do. And they're not, I don't think they're all, they're like Christian or all Christian. I don't know. And, um, they had some bad things going on and it just, it's not, um, it's, I don't think it's a, a godly production. Okay. So just don't do that. Okay. Okay. When, you know, the class that like the day was about to be done, like everyone on campus was about to be done. Um, it felt like we were standing, like he was standing behind a desk more that was the, like the height of a, like if you're paying like at a store buying something. Okay. And I was still talking to him and people kept like this one guy or whatever kept coming up and like, um, you know, when you're talking to someone and then they keep like butting in and, and talking about something else or trying to distract. And then you're like, well, what, you know, trying to get answers and stuff like that. And I was standing there and then Daniel Adams was saying something like he was still talking to me about things. Um, but there was a, it's like, it's like we weren't in the room anymore, but it was the room. And this room was attached to like a big auditorium, like in the college or something, because I could hear, um, it's like a lot of people, a lot of students were flooding or going to this auditorium. And all of a sudden there was this concert going on in there. And I could tell it was like a girl singing. It reminded me of Taylor Swift or someone for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. But there was this girl singing and there was a lot of people already like leaving their classes to go into this concert. And, um, I remember thinking like, don't you hear that? Don't you hear that? And I could just hear how demonic it was. And all these young adults, these kids were being led to this demonic stuff and, um, getting, you know, like I said, at the beginning of the dream, it, it dealt with casting out, um, our deliverance and, 
and things like that. And I was like, this is so demonic. Like, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go in there. Um, and we were getting ready to go, but I felt like there was something that I was going to be doing or we were going to be doing right before we left or we, like we were leaving or something. And I think it had, I think it had something to do with that concert and just, uh, um, demonic spirits and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Then, um, um, as we were driving, my son had mentioned to me and asked me to, you know, his older brother, did he? Okay. Okay. I'm not going to go to that one yet. I'm not going to go to that one yet. Um, so I'm going to read something off to you about that stuff. Um, and I'm going to give a, another warning cause it, it, the Holy Spirit reminded me of it when I was listening to this. Um, check your children's vitamins and things like that, because my, my son and daughter like the Flintstone vitamins, like the gummies, I think they're the Flintstone gummies and stuff like that. Um, more than adult vitamins and things like that. So they started using those, but they had just bought a bottle of them. And, um, all of a sudden my son started having really bad, really bad nosebleeds. And, um, I was like, maybe it's just the air, the allergies, the dry air, you know, maybe a humidifier or something. Okay. So then over that week that he was having the nosebleeds, we were talking about it, like what's going on. It started worrying him about it. I was like, it's got to be the dry air. It's got to be something going on, something in the house, something, it, you know, no, you're fine. It's something else. And then all of a sudden he realized that the days that he missed taking the Flintstone vitamins, um, he didn't have nosebleeds. And so he tried it again. He didn't take a vitamin. He didn't have nosebleeds. And then he took the vitamin and the next day he had nosebleeds took it again, had nosebleeds, didn't take it. He didn't have a nosebleed the next day. So I said, throw it away. Just throw it away. There's something wrong. Throw it away. Um, so I don't know if something has been put in calculations on vitamins are wrong, which can be really bad for your system and cause things like that because something's too high. Um, but it's, it's things where, you know, you're giving them thinking you're helping your children and it's something attacking the children. So throw them away. I don't know. Just throw them away. Don't, don't use them. Throw it away. Okay. I just wanted to say that if you watch some of mine about, um, that I thought something was coming to New York, which I still believe is okay. And, um, and about the prayers for New York. And that was all like the night of September 10th. Okay. Um, and then September 11th. Okay. But I'm going to read real quick. Um, uh, the 10th of September, 2024, the 79th session of the UN general assembly. Okay. will open on Tuesday, 10th, September, 2024, the first day of the high level, high level general debate will be Tuesday, 24 September, 2024. So September 24, 2024. Um, United Nations General Assembly um, is in New York, founded in 1945, New York, New York. Okay. Then um, as I, I want to put this out there that I went um, and I was uploading one of my videos. It was like two days ago and it said that it uploaded on my phone, but then it wasn't showing on my page at all. It just was not showing. And so I called my kids and I was like, go to my channel and see if you see the upload, the new upload I just did. They're like, we don't see it. And I was like, where is it? It's not showing up. Okay. So then I started scrolling down and then I realized that further down, um, I have some videos like, um, five months ago that I put out. Um, and two of them were missing. Just two of the videos were missing. And I was like, are they messing with things? What did they do? And what it was, it was that like you saw the videos lined up and then there were sections missing. They were just black boxes where the video thumbnail would be and where the words would be. And it had just a negative dash, like a, like a circle with a little negative dash. And I was like, what did they do? And I was trying to remember like, which ones were there? 
which ones did they take off? Like what's going on? And I didn't get a warning. I didn't get anything. And I was like, what happened? Which ones do they not want out? Like which ones did they take? Right. So then I went back up and I kind of got out of my phone and I came back in and did whatever again. And the video I uploaded was there. It finally showed up. I have not watched it to see if maybe something got deleted from it or it got messed up somehow. Um, but I scrolled down and there was nothing missing anymore. And so I went back, I slowed down and went back to what I remember, what thumbnails like were around the surrounding ones that were missing, like what was above and below it. So I could remember what it was. And both of them were, I have a picture right here. That's why I'm remembering. I took a screenshot. Both of them were about AI and anti and tribulation. Okay. So I don't know if God was bringing my attention to that and the time, like the time that we're in. Okay. Um, or if they just didn't want it out, maybe they're messed up now. I don't know. But um, the first one is called anti AI tribulation dream. Um, 32424. Okay, so March 24th, 2024. Um, five months ago. And the other one is called second and third dreams. Um, three, six, 24. And the thumbnail, both thumbnails, you know, have AI and things like that. And, um, then one of them has a man pointing called antichrist, um, claiming ground. Okay. Um, but those were the two that were missing. Okay. So back to the, the Taylor thing that I, I didn't really didn't want to say the whole name, but I realized I did in that. Okay. Back to the, if you haven't watched part one, watch part one, um, as well after this one, because it all goes together. There's a big woven puzzle put together. Okay. Um, Okay, so the Revelation 12 sign, you know, the one that appeared in 2017, then it's what, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, it's seven years, so seven years, plenty of seven years famine, like you're about to go into the tribulation, right? Um, I'm going to go into that in a minute. Okay, so um, Taylor, her tour that she's doing right now is called Eras. Eras. And I was like, why is it called Eras? And I was like, oh, she's just going over her music from when she started and her first song she made all the way up to how she's grown. I'm like, no, there's something about Eras. Okay. And um, definition Eras is a fixed point in time from which a series of years is reckoned. That's what the thing says. A fixed point in time. Remember how we say that God they're lying about how long the world's been and things like that. And what they teach you in school, because God has had a fixed point in time that, that the world is going to be for this long. And that's it like 6,000 years. And that's it. This is like the end. Okay. Um, they know that, you know, the devil knows that it's just, people don't really know that. Okay. A fixed point in time from which a series of years is reckoned. Memorable or important date or event, especially one that begins a new period in the history of a person or thing. It reminds me of a new period that they're, they're rising up tribulation. They're rising up the antichrist. Okay. Um, what are the, and, and this is on, let me see. That's Merriam Webster definitions. Okay. And then this next one is like topper.com or something like that. It says, what are the four eras of the earth? Okay. This is by science. Okay. The four main eras are from oldest to youngest. I'm going to say this wrong. Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Xenozoic. Four. Okay. Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Xenozoic. And that, it says periods are a finer subdivision in the geological time scale. In the geological time scale. And the question was, what are the four eras of Earth? Only four. Four eras of Earth. Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. Okay. 
What era do we live in? Cenozoic, the fourth and last. And it says, finally, the Cenozoic called New Life Era is sometimes called the Age of Mammals and is the era during which we live today. Four eras were in the last one, the fourth. Remember that time period I said that God has predestined for the world to be and that's it. Okay. Tribulation and then the thousand year reign and that's it. Right. We are in that fourth era and this is even by science and universities and everyone. This is digital atlas of ancientlife.org. Okay, so it's not even Christian. You can't say, oh, these Christians come up with everything. No, this is scientists saying this, okay? Um, Pre-Cambrian, Pelozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. What era do we live in? The Cenozoic, the last one. And it says, literally, finally, the Cenozoic, and it's called New Life is the way they put it, era, is sometimes called the Age of Mammals. And it's what the era we're living in today. Okay, so even the people that are against God know this. They know what's coming. They know what they're rising up. They know what they're standing for. That's why they call it the great battle of Armageddon. It's good versus evil. They're trying to overthrow. Okay, now listen. Did y'all hear that? New life. We get new life in heaven with Jesus, right? But they want a new life on earth, a new order, a new system, a new system, right? Um, and that's there and they're starting that, right? We're living in that. And it says age of mammals. What's a mammal? We're like a mammal, right? We're mammals because we uh, nurse our young and things like that, right? And we um, carry them in wombs and nurse our young. Okay. So age of mammals. What is the number of a man? The number of a mammal, the number of a man. Six. What are they ushering in? The number of the beast. Six. Six hundred. Sixty. I'm trying to separate that so it doesn't trigger anything. Do you get it? The age of mammals. We're at the age of mammals. What's coming in? What's getting ushered in? That mark. Okay. Um, what does 13 mean? for Taylor. Um, she considers number 13, which it's kind of funny because today is Friday the 13th in September 2024. She considers the number 13 to be her lucky number, often referencing it. She stated in an interview, I was born on the 13th. I turned 13 on Friday the 13th. My first album went gold in 13 weeks. Also, my first song that I ever went, that I ever, that ever went number one, it had a thir 13 second intro. I didn't even do that on purpose. Born on 13th, turned 13 on Friday the 13th. First album went gold in 13 weeks. And the first song that ever went number one was thir had a 13 second intro. Why the number 13 so much? Friday the 13th. What did they like about that number? Do you, Stay with me. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you understand what I'm saying here? Don't be deceived. Christians, don't be deceived. Okay, here's a dream. Okay, then... Um... Um, as we were driving, my son had mentioned to me and asked me to, you know, his older brother, did he tell you about the dream he just had? And I was like, no, you know, he didn't tell me like my oldest son. Okay. And. Uh, okay. We're driving him in life and he's telling me about my, his older brother's dream. Okay. And he's about to talk about it. Um, so he began to tell me this dream that I'm going to tell you. And he said, well, he had it about two nights ago. So that would have been like September 10th, 2024. Okay. He goes, he had it like two nights ago. So September 10th, 2024 or something. And, um, he goes, okay. So in real life, my son works at this company 
And he became really good friends really quick with this man at the company. And the man at the company, my son's been talking to him about, you know, Jesus and things like that. And um, the man at the company just really doesn't want to have anything to do with it. He's traveled around the world. He's seeked other all gods. And he's like, eh, I just really, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Like, it doesn't matter to me anymore. And he just won't come, right? And so my son, my oldest son's been really insistent. He's like, you know, he's my best friend at this company, you know. He's an older, you know, not older, but he's a little, probably a little older than my son, I guess. Okay. Um, so my oldest son's like, you know, 20, um, 28. Um, so anyway, so he, he told them here like recently. Okay. The guy may be in his forties. I don't know. Okay. His friend. Okay. He said, if, um, fine, if you, if you don't want to believe just when everything happens and you know, it's real, like everything happens, don't take the mark. You can't take the mark. Just don't take the mark. And he was explaining to him like what would happen or what's going on. Cause he talks to him about it all the time. So then here starts the dream. My son is finds himself somewhere and he's in a cave. Um, and he's in a cave with my dad. So his grandpa. Okay. And he's, it's him and his grandpa and more people that he knew were like Christians, like they were hiding out in a cave. Okay. Then all of a sudden, um, I'm going to make sure I have this correct. So I'll re-ask, um, right at this point, because I don't know why they came out of the cave, but all of a sudden, um, they came out of the cave and they were walking toward the city. And she said, there was a whole bunch of men, like just men. And, um, they were standing and they were surrounding a table that was like the middle of the street or where they were in the city. Okay. And, um, the table my, it was, it was my, it was the people in the cave and my, my grandpa and my son, and they were standing kind of far away from the men. They saw men, they stopped. Right. And then they saw this table that these men were surrounding. And, um, at the end of the table, he said was a, like a small guillotine and they were laying people down, like making them bend over the table. And then they were, you know, using the guillotine on them. Okay. And, um, he said he was standing there. They didn't move and he was standing there and he saw them grab this other man and they bent him over the table and he said when the man that was bent over the table, he turned his face and he looked toward, he looked toward my oldest son and they made on eye contact, like they locked eyes and they just didn't, like they kept staring at each other. He said that the man that they had built up, been to the, you know, over the table with a guillotine, um, was his coworker, the one he's constantly trying to bring to Jesus. And he realized it was his coworker when he looked at him. He saw his face and he said, um, he said they locked eyes and he just looked at him and he was about to, they were about to use the guillotine and my, my son in the dream said he, my son started yelling, yes, for Jesus, for Jesus. And he kept saying it for Jesus. And he said that he kept screaming it. People were looking at him like he was crazy because he was cheering that this guy was like getting killed or something. And, um, he was screaming for Jesus and that his coworker that was bent over that they were using the guillotine on, he said it wasn't, it wasn't a good guillotine and they had to do it three times. And every time they did it, he would scream for Jesus. And that guy just kept his eyes locked on my son. Like they just kept looking at each other. And my son was, <laughs> my son was just praising Jesus, giving up strength, just praising Jesus. 
And my son said that in the dream he knew he was about to get his beat at the guillotine too. That he knew that he was going to be next at the guillotine. Um, <clears throat> and so when I heard this, I thought maybe God was giving him a dream to let him know that that his friend, the co-worker, that his friend was going to choose Jesus and he was going to come and be in heaven with him, that he was going to choose Jesus, um, that it was okay. He was going to choose Jesus and he was going to stand up for Jesus at the end. He was going to give his, lay his life down and not take the mark. And I said, man, I said he was locking eyes with my son. And I believe at that moment that that man that was his friend wasn't looking at my son, but he was seeing Jesus, that Jesus was there in the midst of him. And he was seeing Jesus, that God was with him when that was going on. <clears throat> Okay, then um, September 12th, 2024, my daughter woke with this dream. Okay, so I had a dream that like, it was a birthday, I guess. Um, it was me and my mom, I think my brother, um... I don't know, we're at home, and I was getting ready for the party. Like, I was, like, getting everything ready, and, like, I had the cake getting ready. I don't know. From my, like, like my view, it was weird. Like, I was in two places at once. It was weird. I don't know. It was weird or something, and um, it was, like, like a medium kind of cake, round circle, it was white, and it had, like, ruffle on the side, like, the, um, what's it called? Like the dripped icing. Yeah, dripped icing, I guess, like, the swoops. And on the bottom of the swoops, it has, like, red hearts. It had a lot of like, extra stuff, but, um, <clears throat> I don't remember. Um, because I was, like, I was wanting to put happy birthday, but, um, there was a lot of stuff going, so I was, like, okay. I guess I just kind of talk, I mean, try to fit it on there, I guess. And, um, I remember, I had something else with it too, but I have no idea. Um, and then, I remember having a party hat on, like a little cap, the little cone on her head. And, um, I had a, what was it called? I don't know what they're called. You blow. And then you blow in, and then and the thing what, it goes out to make a swoop and makes a noise. Like a what? I don't know. I don't know. That'd be funny because like it reminds, it reminds me of a trumpet. You know? It doesn't. Maybe maybe a trumpet. Maybe a trumpet. What's that called? Because the cake can be the wedding, and then yeah. they yeah. make a trumpet. Cool. I thought about it earlier. I forgot about that. That's all. No. Oh, and then my mom asked me, like, is everything done already? Um, and I was like, yeah. And I was like, thinking to myself, okay, don't forget to put the, the happy birthday on the cake. But I couldn't do it. I know I couldn't do it before he, the person gets there. Um, so as soon as the person gets there, um, I would have to put the happy birthday on the cake. Yeah. And I was like, everything's prepared, right? And you were like, yeah, but you're waiting. You said they couldn't. Yeah, that's what she said. That's what I just said. Is that it? That's, yeah. Okay, so I really liked that dream. She said they, she knew that he was on his way. That that he, she couldn't put, um, the happy birthday on the top of the cake until, um, he got there. Like he showed up or whatever. He got there. Um. But it just hit me as I was, you know, uh, coming down to finish the part two that I'm in right now, um, that she said that those little blowy things, it reminded her of the trumpet, right? And then the birthday cake reminder of the wedding cake, right? 
um, the marriage supper of the lamb, but it hit me that the little party hat <laughs> it reminds me of the crown, the, the crown of life you're going to get right. The, the crown of life he promises, he promised eternal life and the crown, the crowns, the rewards and the crown of life you're going to get. <clears throat> So then um, she put that on my phone at 1230 a.m. Um, so she had it um, September 12th, but because it was 1230 a.m., um, it was just turned, you know, September 13th. And she put that on my phone so I could use it. And then I um, heard this. I heard Matthew 23, 18 through 39. Okay. So truthfully, I heard, um, Matthew 23, 18. Okay. Um, right. It was 20 through 18, I think. Okay. And then when I went to it, I was led to 18 through 39. Okay. So we're going to read that. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it. He is guilty. Yea, fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift of or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay the tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye be ha to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, Scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also out outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Who unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets, and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if, ye, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets." Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Take that upon that upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berechias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come unto this generation. This generation stood out. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, 
ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And when I read, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I heard, O world, O world. But um, the gift is Jesus, the gift of salvation that God gave through his son, Jesus Christ. It's a free gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. Right? We walk in good works to show his glory, but Jesus is our salvation his blood and what he did. It's a gift. And it reminded me of the, he says he comes and he brings his gifts with him. Right. <laughs> when he comes back to get us, it says he comes and he brings his gifts with him. And it just reminded me of the birthday party. Um, and the party hat and the trumpets <laughs> and the cake. Happy birthday. Okay, so much more, more revelations, more dreams. Um, so I have to do a part three because this is getting really long. Please stay with me. If you haven't seen part one, go watch part one so you can get the whole puzzle that God's laying out.